is a late addition to the program, replacing Friday, who unfortunately couldn't get the visa. Um, but this is going to be great to hear about civic time with you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Shinwakin Folari. Um, well, I dare to call myself a civic tech practitioner. Um, and basically, um, what I want to do is just tell us some stories of some efforts in Nigeria um, as well. Um, some of them are efforts that I led that failed. So I'll just tell us these three stories. This was um, a project that um, was about helping the locals report on oil spills in Nigeria. It looked like a very good intervention at that time because there was a spate of um, oil spills and the IOC, the International Oil Companies, government and the locals were having a big fight. So the idea was, why don't we just have a, a portal um, and an application, a mobile app, where you will be able to report um, your side of the story. And um, that became this, All Spill Witness. But it fell dead on arrival. And interestingly, um, when we got to the local com, because we had to go and um, um, sell this app to the, to the locals, we realized that they, are, they, they, they weren't interested in this, but rather they were interested in um, how they can benefit from extorting the situation, which was a very dire situation, but they um, were able to extort the IOCs um, whenever there was an oil spill. So um, this is one example of one field um, project. This one is also um, clearly a poor needs assessment, an example of a, of a poor needs assessment. Interestingly, the interesting thing about this site, was it was launched in 2012, and it had the same, um, the same core engine that ran uh, something like Dropbox. So in order to manage the data that you got from a very remote place, we had to build in a layer that allowed them to send data without, um, with very low bandwidth. But it failed. So what we learned from that is that we have to first get community buying before we build um, these products. This other product, um, trying to play this. Welcome to Marketplace Africa. I'm Robin Kono here on the streets of central Johannesburg. On the show this week, investing in Africa, who's doing it and what more needs to be done. We begin with a market that's primed for takeoff, providing internet access to the millions of Africans who aren't online. Major internet companies are eyeing Africa as Christian Purefoy reports from Nigeria for our In Focus segment. Nigeria's computer geeks, armed with just their mobile phones, are hoping to save hundreds of lives every year from collapsing buildings across Lagos. There's a lot of weight um, because of the tilt, so you can see the cracks. Shayon Akunfalarin and his colleagues are embracing new technology. Their new mobile application allows people to take a photo of a potentially dangerous building and the date and GPS coordinates will be automatically uploaded to the internet for the government's attention. Before, well, it didn't get the government, well, it got the government's attention, but people didn't bother to take any pictures or send it to the government. Um, this is another example of a product that um, even CNN thought it was a great idea because in Lagos then there was a spate of um, collapsing buildings and they always had these telltale signs on the building before it collapsed. And government's claim was that uh, if they could get the information beforehand, then they could do something about it. But interestingly, um, 
even though it was backed by the government, it didn't work. So that's the second um, example. And what we realized was that the, the, um, there was a lot of um, apathy from the urban areas with tools like this. We experienced this because when we try to get people that should normally use this kind of um, products, they weren't interested at all. Um, and what we figured out is there was, there was, um, there is a, um, a latent apathy with the very elite areas in quotes in Nigeria. This data was uh, what we just found out. Uh, it's, it's just to um, explain the, the phenomenon that we observed. This is the abandoned um, voters card in Nigeria. This is this part of Nigeria in red has the highest um, literacy rates. But they are the, the people that are least interested in elections, as it turns out. And one of the reasons, and it's one of the reasons why civic tech tools, um, they are not so interested in civic tech tools. This is the subnational illiteracy rate. And you can see that these areas um, where we have the red, they seem to be more interested in the elections because they, uh, they collected um, their PVCs. So this is another story that explains uh, why in urban areas we might not have as much adoption of civic tech in Nigeria. So I'll go to the very successful um, civic tech companies, organizations, budget, EIE, some of them you know. And one of the reasons we observed that made them very successful initially was because they simply, um, they simply had a, a call, for, a call to action on their, they were media companies that had advocacy components built into their work. And this is the model that seems very successful in Nigeria. So it, it isn't fully civic tech, because when they tried to build their own civic tech tools as well, it failed as well. But one last one I'd like to um, talk about is Tracker. And what this site does is it provides information about public projects to people in the community so that they can um, provide some sort of advocacy around those projects. And something interesting happened in, this, uh, in the last two or three months that's never happened in Nigeria. Um, I need to let you know that Nigeria has been a country that has been under military rule for 33 years. So we have a, a, a percentage of the citizens that seem very passive, uninterested in things like this. But with Tracker's efforts, we, we found out that after they did an initial um, public engagement about the project that was about a road, a 21 kilometer road that was coming to a community that when the road was completed and the, um, the contractor and government wanted to hand it over to them, they refused it. And you know, in the normal, um, they were surprised, the government was surprised that why will these people refuse what in quote in the Nigerian psychology is a gift to them. But they said, oh, oh this, uh, we have already seen this project in the budget. This is the number of kilometers of roads you said you were going to do. This is what you're bringing to us. And somebody in the community had gone ahead to measure the length of road that was built. It was 14 kilometers instead of 21. So they, um, they put out a fight with the government officials, and they had to now return back. They came back a couple of months after, and they built the full um, 21 kilometers. 
of road. But the, the tool that Tracker built for this as well wasn't as successful. So trying to now understand all this, we realized that there were the, the, in order to get people to be more excited about um, civic tech tools in Nigeria, it was imp important to first start from the point where we just give them the information for them to act on, as against trying to get them to push information into an app and own it. And one of the, um, and that is, that is where, where we're trying to get all these um, organizations to move towards now, is to create a database of people in this community and push information to them. We are not at that point yet where they would um, own the platform and start using it. So it's very important that we know where the um, community is so that we put more effort in community development before we, um, before we build tools. But not to leave, not to, so that I can leave you with um, one good story, one good example. In the 2011, 2015 elections, we had um, a parallel vote tally using USSD, which is low tech. And by the time all the results came in from um, short, short code USSD, the difference between the, um, the votes that we were able to tally and the government's official vote was 2%. So on that day, when people were most um, engaged, probably because it was elections, we realized that that low technology, um, USSD, seemed to be a very, very um, powerful tool to engage people. So where we are, I'll say, is still at the very low tech, um, civic tech level. And that's what we observed from um, the study of all these projects. So that's um, the very grim story. I hope that it doesn't seem too bad, but it's very good that we know where we are so that we can build from um, that point on. Thank you. <laughs>